Hey my squidlings, Katie here. Hope you're having a squidlicious day today. Today I am doing something that I've done earlier on my channel and that is a light fastness test. So uh, last time I did some inks and this time I swatched out all of my different watercolors and I thought I had filmed it and I was going to talk about it and all that stuff but if I filmed it I lost the video and if I didn't film it well obviously there's no video to uh, show you. So um, I have a bunch of different watercolors on this paper. They've been sitting in my window since I think the end of November or the beginning of December. So they've been there a while. So I've got some Kudatake Gansai Tombies. I've got the Gansai Tombi Starry Colors. Uh, some Core Watercolors. Some Holbein Watercolors. The Lucas 1862 Watercolors. And just for funsies, I added my brusho in there. I do know that they're dye-based, so they're probably not going to last very long, but I thought it would be fun. So these sat in almost 100% full sun, aside from, you know, when it was like snowing and stuff, uh, for the better part of three months. Now, I want to let you know that for light fastness test to be like 100% accurate, you need to leave it there for a long time. This is only three months, so colors can still shift uh, if I were to put them back into my window, but I figured three months uh, is a long time to be putting this stuff to the test for me, so I thought I would just go ahead and, you know, do all that stuff. So, I have some electrical tape on here because I'm super ratchet and I couldn't find anything else. Uh, but we're going to peel that off today and we're going to see what was light fast and what was not. Hey, future Katie here, just letting you know that I'm going to be at Heroes and Villains and Walker Stalker convention on April 7th through 8th. So if you're in the Chicago area and you're planning on going to one or both of those conventions, Technically, they're the same convention because one ticket covers both. I will be on the Heroes and Villains side at booth 817, so come see me, come say hi, and if you come see me, I will probably have a cute little freebie if you mention the fact that you are a squid friend or part of the squid pod, so yay for that! Uh, come see me, I would love to see you, and yeah, let's continue on the video. So we're going to start with these Kudatake colors, if I can even get this to peel off. Okay, so right off the bat, I am super disappointed. I love these paints, so I figured they would, you know, last a little longer than <laughs> three months in the window. Here, I'm trying to get as close as I can. I don't know if you can see, but this had like blue undertones, and with the sun, it totally faded out. Uh, this blue faded completely. Yellow it really isn't that bad. It faded a little bit, but it's not so bad. And the red shifted a tiny bit as well. Oh my goodness! Again, I'm kind of disappointed. The pink really wasn't too bad. You can see the line, um, it shifted a little. Yellow is still really good. The green lost its blueness, and this blue just, <laughs> it just died. Oh my gosh! I don't even have high hopes for the rest of these rows now. I'm very sad about this. Alright, so with the next row, uh, the pink had some shifting. Again, the yellow the yellows really don't seem to shift that much. The greens do, though. My goodness. Purple really wasn't that bad either. It, It's really not even shifted at all. Um, but yeah, I'm really disappointed with the blues and the reds right now. They are not doing a good job. Okay, this one had some better results. The pink, or red, or whatever you call it, shifted, but the green wasn't too bad, and neither was this one, which I was shocked about, because I do know that it had some white mixed in it, so I'm a little shocked that it didn't fade, and there's some minimal fading between the purple, but it's it's really not as bad as I thought it would be. Now, before I even peel it off, I can totally tell this one's faded, because it was not this color when I put it down. Alright, here we go. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Well, kids, the proof is in the pudding. Um, this one shifted just... Look, it, it's like orangey, like a vermilion, and it was not that color. The green's good. The blue, for the most part, is pretty good. And I, I knew this one just had just died. Um, it was really pretty rose, and now it is not. <laughs> I did know some of these were going to shift, but I didn't know all of these were going to shift like this. Oh my god! I'm sorry, you're gonna hear me say that a bunch. I'm just really shocked because I thought these were way more light fast than they are. So again, this one was like a vermilion color. It faded to an orange. The green is good, the blue is good, and the brown is okay. It did lighten a little bit, but it's not too bad. But oh, these reds are disappointing. Aside from this one, this one's pretty good. and. 
Oh my word. Next one. All right, this row isn't too bad. The top one did fade. Uh, it was like a light orange, now it's like a light yellow orange. Green faded a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, so did the blue, and then uh, this like burnt umber really didn't shift too much. But uh, for the most part, the only one that shifted in this row was this one. Uh, the other one's just lightened a tiny bit. All right, now for the last one. I suppose this was a good way to end it off at least. Um, this top one, there's actually no shift at all. Uh, this one, the little, the blues kind of shifted out. This one lightened a tiny bit and the black didn't go anywhere. So, uh, there is the Kudatake Gonzai Tombi Light Fastness for three months. Now, if I had left it in there for longer, a lot of these would be a lot more faded. So, I am heavily disappointed because these are some of my favorite paints. Alright, now on to the starry colors. I did these kind of for fun, so I don't really know if they shifted or not. Alright, they did not, oh, I lifted some up though. They did not shift, but any um, stuff you see that changed, uh, it was actually because I just lifted it up, <laughs> but yeah, they didn't shift at all. Now we're going to be doing the Lucas 1862, which is like this whole section right here, so, um, well, these two are stuck together. Alright, let's go. Oh no, I ripped it! Well, <laughs> that's not going to be accurate. Alright, well, we're going to do the bottom ones first, then, because I'm going to do it from the other way. Well, this whole bind one did not shift at all. And neither did this core, which is nice. Uh, no shift. No shift. Uh, and then I ripped them, but I do not think these... Well... This one had like a slight shift, but it, it's so minimal. And then the yellow didn't go anywhere either. I shouldn't have been so hasty when I peeled it. Alright, so I'm just going to peel it all the way down. I'm going to try to go a lot slower. So there's no shift with these so far. Ugh, I ripped it again. Well, next time I won't use this tape because freaking this is just terrible. Alright, well, we're going to go for Holbein, which, again, has no shift. And same with the core. Uh, there's a little bit of shift. It lightened up a little. And, again, the blue lightened up just a tiny bit. Okie dokie, next up. Alright, there's no shift there. I'm actually really proud of these Lucas ones, but I'm not really surprised because they are a relatively expensive set. This pink light end a tiny bit, but it really isn't much. And then, basically, there's no shift outside of that. Uh, how about the core? Nope, no shift, even though I did rip it, and I'm still ripping it. Okay, we're going to go from the other side. Uh, this one had a tiny bit of shift. If you can tell, it's the Holbein yellow. Um, it lightened quite a bit. Alright, next row for the Lucas. Also, whatever pen I used was light fast. I don't know what it was, though. Alright, this, this did shift. Um, you can tell it lightened quite a lot in the lighter areas. But again, a lot of the Lucas ones that are lightening, it's when I added more water. That one's good. This one shifted a little bit lighter. And so did this one, but again, it's only in the parts where I used a lot of water. Not near as disappointing as the Kudatake ones. Alright, how about that core? No color shift. Oh no! And Holbein also had no color shift. So, yay! <laughs> I'm starting to learn what brands I should use and what brands I should not. Okie dokie, next up. Alright, well, there's no color shift on this one. Because this, even though it is stuck to this row, <laughs> it's this one I'm doing. Uh, no color shift. 
No color shift. Yay for no color shift! I'm actually surprised. I figured this tealy one would have some shift. So that whole row is good. It's always nice seeing when uh, there's no color shift. Yay! Alright. Next row. No color shift. Oh, this is so nice. Plus, peeling this off is just so satisfying. Alright, this one lightened up a little bit, which isn't really surprising. But yeah, other than that one that lightened up just very slightly, uh, that row was good. Well, that was it for the whole bind, which did pretty well aside from the yellow, but again, that was just the lighter areas. Uh, we're about to do the last one in the core, and we're going to continue working on the Lucas. Okay, so, um, <laughs> that just peeled up, but, uh, pretty sure there's no color shift there. And, really, no color shift there either, so, uh, Core and Holbein are actually really good sets to use if you want to try to stand the test of time. So far, Lucas is. There's only a couple that have really lightened up, and not this one. I did this one. Like, I peeled that up, so... But yeah, uh, so far these are all good. Uh, if you want Kudetake to stand the test of time, don't, because it doesn't, which is a darn shame. Their shiny colors do, though. Alright, on to some more Lucas. This is on both, but that's okay. Alright, this is good. I peeled up a little paint there, but yeah, I will not be using this tape again because... Uh, it's actually peeling it up and it's really sticky and so yeah I won't be using that again all right so as I peel these last ones off I'm also gonna be peeling the brush -o ones up which I'm gonna do this from the bottom because the brush -o ones were the fun ones I decided to add um, <laughs> I know that these aren't gonna be light fast I just wanted to see how bad they shifted oh oh my this one wasn't too bad but this is terrible Alright, so this orange one did lighten slightly, but the other ones are good. Alright, time for brush show number two. <laughs> this is I'm just blown away by that one. Surprisingly, this one didn't shift too much either. The blues are pretty solid. Oh my god, look at that. It's so bad. This one lightened slightly. It's not much. But other than that, the rest of the Lucas was good. Actually, you know what? I lied. Since I peeled some of the paint off with this one, um, I thought it hadn't lightened, but this is the actual swatch. So it, this one did. So these two oranges kind of lightened slightly, but this one lightened a lot. So uh, just be aware of that. And then the last one for the brush-o. <laughs> Look at this purple. It's so bad. And then, yeah, that yellow. Oh my god. So, yeah, brush -o is not light fast, but again, I knew that it was dye based. It just was fun. Alright, and all of those are good. And then, last on the Lucas. Okay, so this one is the biggest shift I've seen with Lucas. That one shifted quite a lot. I'm actually very surprised about that one. And then 
the rest of these are good. Let's zoom out a little bit. All right, so here is our chart that, um, obviously I charted. The Core Watercolors, Whole Bind Watercolors, they're great. Um, at least the set I have, this is the High Chroma set. And then this is their, like, basic intro set. It's just got the basic colors. Um, again, brush show is not great. I'm very surprised about Kudatake. They, their greens are okay. Their yellows are pretty good. But if it's got a blue pigment in it or a red pigment, it doesn't really seem to stick around. So um, I'm actually really sad about that because, again, I love Kudatake. Uh, their starry colors, again, just a fun thing I wanted to add in there. And then my Lucas colors, um, thankfully they stood the test of time. The only thing that did not was this blue color here. Uh, everything else lightened slightly, but it wasn't enough to throw the whole picture into chaos, so that's okay. So, yeah, these are not all the watercolors I owned, but these are all the ones that I could fit on this swatch card. So if you've seen a review of mine that is a watercolor and you want to see me swatch it out and put it for the test of time into the, the window of sunlight, I don't know where I was going with that, uh, leave a comment and let me know down below. Uh, also, do you have some watercolors that you know of that do not stand the test of time that you are very surprised about? Uh, maybe they're one of these, maybe there's something you own, let me know in a comment below. So, uh, thank you guys for watching, I hope you found this informative or something, um, it's always nice to see which uh, paints don't really stick around for very long. Um, but yeah, I am playing with this tape way too much. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I love you guys so incredibly much, and I hope that the rest of your day is absolutely as squidlicious as you are, which is amazingly squidlicious. So, so yeah, uh, until next time, my adorable squidlicks, toodaloo! I need to get rid of this tape.